This is a lesson on speed and relaxation from my new technique book, and you can find a link for the book under the video, but you can also just watch and grab some tips for free. So just remember, when we're talking about um, gaining speed on the guitar, we're really talking about um, a combination of different things coming into play. So I've kind of cr created the, the equation of speed equals economy of motion. So that means using small, concise movements, plus accuracy, so making sure you're accurate and you know what you're playing, and then relaxation. Um, those three things combined will result in speed naturally, and to some extent, I really don't think, um, in order to play fast, I don't think you need to practice playing fast necessarily. I think you need to practice economy of motion, accuracy, and relaxation. And then speed will come naturally to you. But let's start with relaxation. One thing that I've found is that when we try to play fast, we, we tend to tense up. So learning to relax, especially in the left hand, um, is very important. So let's grab a major scale. We'll do a G major scale. So that's starting with the second finger on the third string. So you just want to make sure you know a G major scale, but you can do this with any finger pattern at all. What we're going to do is we're going to play a muted scale. So the left hand is going to touch the string at that fret, but it won't push the string down to the metal. So you're not going to push the string down so it touches the fret. So it won't produce any sound. And what we can do with this is that by digging in with the right hand, we can disassociate the two hands from tension because often when the right hand plays heavy and fast, the, the left hand clenches up as well because they just feel connected in that way. This will really help break that um, physical association. You'll play super light in this hand and hard in this hand. Developing a very fluid and light touch in the left hand. But all the same things apply. Keep your fingers curved, um, play on your fingertips, have your fingers hovering over the frets, but you'll just be playing muted. I think it's that's, that's a really great exercise. You can do it with any pattern that's closed that doesn't involve open strings. You could even try like um, pushing down so little that you, you buzz a little bit, like buzz on purpose. To try to like gain real control over your left hand, but I would start with just the muted exercise. The next thing that might help with speed is playing staccato and speed bursts. Playing staccato makes the, by placing the next available right hand finger down, puts the finger into place before it has to play, which is kind of more important than, than how fast you move your fingers in, it's how fast they reset and go back to the starting position. So you play staccato and then on the speed burst you'll play legato. Of course you can play faster, but... And you can also make the burst faster and smaller. Etc, etc. You could also um, just change the position of where those fast notes occur. Um, just trying to add some little bursts to get used to the idea of playing faster. Then you could also, um, not just doing small speed bursts, but doing kind of more extended ones. So keeping it all under control. Lots of 
books have these kinds of exercises where um, we'll ease into longer groups of 16th notes and then ease out of them just to train the hand some control at the same time as speed. You really want control and speed or economy of motion and accuracy and speed to kind of like be grouped together. Um, you don't want to just practice playing fast, you want to practice playing in control and then fast and in control, but never just trying to play fast randomly, right? The last thing I'll say about um, speed, and because I, I don't really believe in, in practicing speed specifically, I think you need to practice technique and it's very slowly and speed will come naturally. But one other thing is just quality control and destination points. If you're playing a scale, for example, a C major scale, even a first position C major scale, doesn't matter which one, doing small groups of notes in small bursts, but at a very high quality level, is a great way to practice. Playing just three notes of a scale, but very legato and in control. And then increasing it to four notes. And then increasing it to five notes, but making sure that it's still high quality as you increase the distance. If you start to go like this, and it starts to get broken up, go back to just three notes. And make sure that's legato, then four. All very legato, very smooth. You're relaxed, you're in control, you have all of that. Going to every destination note within a scale or a musical passage in your pieces um, we'll make sure that each note has been um, dedicated, has had like a dedicated time to be reached very smoothly, very legato, and very in control. So just always breaking up your music into small chunks at high quality levels.